One of the most famous elections in all of U.S. history is the election of 2000. On one side, you have Vice President Al Gore for the Democrats. On the other, you have Republican nominee George W. Bush out of Texas. Each candidate battled um, for independent voters. Those are undecided. Both candidates promised to cut taxes, made education, health care, big priorities in yep. their campaigns. But on election day, voters split almost evenly. The election came down to the state of Florida. There's going to be a lot of controversy brewing in this little area. The results in Florida were so close that state law required a recount of the ballots using vote counting machines. So here's the error. Here's the here's the problem. Right when you look at the ballot here, you're going to see something called hanging chads, where they would punch in. And what is a voter's truly true intentions? With some people would when they punch in, they'd have a little dimple. Others it would be halfway punched through. Then you have a full punch through. Does that really show a voter's intentions? Um, the direction said they need to be a full punch through and so you have a controversy with those so in the end who's going to win this particular election the machines themselves going back to the hanging chad problem they threw out thousands of ballots because they could not determine a vote for a president so al gore asked for a hand recount vote counters tried to determine what voters intended and different counties used different standards it was just a big mess over in Florida. So what happened in the end? When it became clear that not all of the recounts would be finished on time, Gore went to court to overturn the deadline. The Florida Supreme Court set a new deadline for completion of the results. The U.S. Supreme Court then overturned the Florida Supreme Court decision to extend the deadline, and George W. Bush was named the president. There is a third candidate that ran in this particular election, Ralph Nader, running for the Green Party, comes in third. Um, a lot of people think that he probably took enough votes away from Al Gore to make a difference in Florida and several other states as well. So there you have the electoral map of the election of 2000. George W. Bush will be taking office. So in Bush v. Gore, the majority ruled that the varying standards used in Florida's recount violated the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. Gore ended the crisis by accepting the ruling Bush wins with 271 electoral votes to Gore's 266. Very close election. So during the 2000 campaign, the U.S. economy began to slow down. The stock market dropped. Many internet-based technology companies went out of business. Bush's first priority, though, in office was to cut taxes to try and boost the economy. So he's, Congress will pass a very large tax cut. So one point. $35 trillion tax cut was spread over 10 years. It lowered the top tax bracket, gradually eliminated state taxes, increased the child tax credit. Democrats criticized it for giving benefits to the richest 5% of the population and doubling the nation, national debt from $5 trillion to $10 trillion as well. During his time in office, Bush will also pass the No Child Left Behind Act, which aimed to improve student performance, close the gap between well-to-do and poor students in public schools through testing of all students nationwide, granting students the right to transfer to better schools, funding stronger reading programs, and, and training high-quality teachers. There's a lot of down uh, shortcomings of the No Child Left Behind Act. For example, each school is supposed to meet a benchmark every single year, and that benchmark rises and rises. You can only go up. But if you go down, that's going to be bad news as well. 9-11 um, will occur during President Bush's time in office in 2001. Domestic changes in response to 9-11. You, you, you have the the, the security levels, the department, the creation of the Department of Homeland Security that will be um, also a part of this as well. TSA and flights. Uh, will be a forever change. But also Congress drafted a new series of anti-terrorist laws called the Patriot Acts of 2001-2003. Permits secret searches and allowed authorities to obtain a single nationwide search warrant. It also made it easier to wiretap suspects and allowed authorities to track internet communications and seize voicemail. Americans during this time are becoming more and more aware. Well, they're disturbed by the fact that the government has an increased ability to sur uh, in, in surveillance um, and so forth. So as the Office of Homeland Security struggled to coordinate all the federal agencies fighting terrorism, President Bush asked Congress to combine all the agencies into what we now have as the Department of Homeland Security in the aftermath of 9-11. In 2005, Hurricane Katrina hit the Gulf Coast, in particular New Orleans and Louisiana was hit really hard 
um, lots of lots of death and much destruction. Federal Emergency Management um, Associate Agency FEMA did not effectively handle the situation, where 1,000 people died, 10, 000, tens of thousands were left in desperate conditions. Just such a devastating moment Spirit. from that time period. The housing boom of 2002 to 2007 was fueled by risky subprime mortgages, who borrowed um, to flip properties for a quick profit. Wall Street firms packaged these high-risk loans into a variety of complex investments and sold them to unsuspecting investors around the world. At the same time, gas prices also were increasing, soared well over $4 a gallon. When housing prices dropped, foreclosures increased, and investments worth trillions of dollars lost value. Investors panicked, which caused banks to face failure. This resulted in a credit or liquidity crisis because banks either lacked funds or were afraid to make the loans to businesses and consumers necessary for the day-to-day -day functioning of the economy. So in early 2008, the government tried a $170 billion stimulus package and took over a few critical financial institutions, such as Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Additional panic ensued when the large Wall Street investment bank Lehman Brothers went bankrupt. The Economic Stabilization Act of 2008 was passed, creating a $700 billion Troubled Assets Relief Program, TARP, to purchase failing assets that included mortgages and mortgage-related securities from financial institutions. Conservatives looked at TARP as socialism, while liberals attacked it as a bailout of Wall Street executives who caused the problem in the very first place anyway. <laughs> So in the election of 2008, Bush can no longer run. He's he's two-term president. Now you've got a new challenger, Democrat nominee Barack Obama, out of Illinois, and that'll be the subject of our next video. Hope this was really helpful. Please let me know if you still have questions. Thanks for watching.